Uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the uh, part two on the drug designing and the uh, drug discovery. In the first part of this video, uh, I gave you a general introduction to the uh, drug discovery and uh, about different terms uh, that are used uh, with respect to the drug designing or the drug discovery like uh, I told you about the uh, targets, uh, what an established target mean, what a new target mean and th that sort of things. Now, in this particular video, uh, I want to talk about the uh, steps of the uh, drug designing. Now, what would you do uh, if I gave you $2.6 billion? Now, for a pharmaceutical companies, uh, the answer is to develop a drug. Not a handful, not a few, but a single drug. What this means is that $2.6 billion is the estimated development cost of a single FDA approved drug. Uh, for perspective, uh, 48 new medicines that were uh, approved by the FDA in 2019, therefore the total development cost of all of the uh, approved 48 drugs that amount to around uh, $125 billion. Now the process of uh, discovering a drug that involves many scientists running thousands of experiments over many years. Uh, however, technological advances in various steps of this process have not yet translated into a dramatic increase in the FDA approved drugs. Uh, why the, uh, why the uh, technological advances that have not been translated uh, into an increase in number of the FDA approved drug? Uh, for that you have to understand why so many uh, reported breakthrough fails and why the cost of drug development, drug discovery or the drug development that remains so high. So uh, let's walk through the uh, steps to tackle an unknown human disease. For example, if there is an unknown human disease, how are you going to treat this particular unknown human disease? So that is going to tell you uh, what are the steps that are involved in designing of a drug for an unknown disease. Now the first thing is when you talk about the uh, unknown uh, human disease or any unknown disease is uh, finding a target. Uh, because if you are able to find a target that you can target with a drug, that means you have the chances to treat that particular unknown disease. So how and where uh, might you begin the search for a drug target to help with the uh, unknown human disease? Now, if you talk about the uh, living beings, for example, the human beings, uh, there are many kind of the molecules, uh, but for the most part, they can be classified into four groups. Uh, the DNA, the RNA, which are collectively known as the nucleic acids, uh, the proteins and the metabolites. Now, when you talk about the uh, in modern ages, like in 2021, uh, you'll be uh, using the omics approach uh, to start the search for finding a target. Now, uh, omics are a group of techniques that use large data sets to identify patterns in one of the four groups of molecules like that uh, the omics can help you in uh, identifying the patterns in dna the rna the proteins or the metabolites uh, but the starting point for most of the target searches that start with the uh, genomics uh, which actually focus on the uh, genetic material of living organisms now, when you talk about this genomics, this genomics concern itself with identifying what genes are associated with a specific disease. Now, hundreds of thousands uh, of sample human genomes that have been deposited into uh, databases, uh, which are known as the biobanks. Now, uh, what these uh, the data available in these uh, biobanks, these genomes, they are actually packed with medical history of volunteers and scientists can actually analyze the data to discover what gene can be associated with the uh, unknown human disease. Now, despite the great promise that genomic has in helping us better understand disease, genes are not good uh, drug targets. Now, luckily, uh, each gene usually encode uh, for a small set of proteins and proteins are very good drug targets. Now, when we talk about the omics approach for the protein, uh, that omic approach is usually called is the proteomics, uh, in which you actually focus on uh, a collection of the proteins that can be a possible cause of the uh, unknown human disease. Now, currently only 10% of the human proteins uh, that are known as druggable, they are known to be druggable. 
Now what this term druggable mean? Now this term druggable is actually used in drug discovery to describe a biological target. So if you are, your target is a, a protein, so you can say that a druggable protein uh, that is actually uh, known or predicted to bind with high affinity to a drug or a drug is termed druggable or a target is termed druggable if its activity behavior or function that can be uh, modulated by a drug or like to be or likely to be a good drug target so this term a druggable mean that you can actually target that particular uh, this particular target or this particular protein with the help of a drug and if the drugs interact with this particular target it can actually modulate its activity so only 10% uh, of the human proteins currently they are known is uh, druggable or they are known to be druggable means that can interact with the drugs because not every protein is druggable a breakthrough in discovering the cause of the uh, unknown human disease does not always provide a good basis for drug discovery for example if you uh, come to know that a particular uh, protein is involved in the unknown human disease but if you are not available with drugs that can actually modulate the activity of that particular protein that means that that particular protein is not druggable and you cannot treat that particular disease uh, because you cannot target the uh, protein now what are the uh, properties of a promising drug target when you talk about the targets there can be many targets uh, but what are the properties of a promising or a good drug target now the first thing is that you uh, need to identify in the target that the target has a confirmed role in the pathophysiology of a disease or is disease modifying so you have to confirm this that the protein for example if your target is a protein that the protein you are targeting that has got a confirmed role in the pathophysiology of the disease or is involved in the modification of the disease now that particular protein uh, that target expression is not evenly distributed throughout the body for example if your target is a protein and if that protein is uh, expressed throughout your body in all of the cells of your body that means you cannot target that particular protein because if you are going to target that particular protein that is going to affect whole of the body so the target expression uh, is not evenly distributed throughout the body now the third thing is that the uh, target 3D structure is available to assess druggability because if the uh, 3D structure uh, I'll be using uh, this term uh, this target uh, by a specific example that is that we'll be talking about the proteins. So the uh, target 3D structure this means that the protein 3D structure that should be available to assess druggability because if the 3D structure of that particular protein that is not available that means you cannot uh, check the interaction of the uh, drugs with that particular protein. Now the target is easily assayable uh, enabling the high throughput screening and uh, I told you in the last video that usually the high throughput screening in the process of the high throughput screening you are screening uh, like million of chemical compounds for interaction with the uh, drug target so the 3d structure is also helping you uh, in the uh, enabling of the high throughput screening and another important thing is that the target possesses a promising toxicity profile. You should know about the toxicity profile of that particular drug. You should know about the potential adverse effect that can be predicted using the uh, phenotypic data. Because if a drug that is interaction with your target, but that have got very high adverse effect or that has got many side effects, that means you cannot utilize that particular drug to uh, target your protein and hence to treat that particular disease. Once you have uh, identified a target, the next step is the validation of the drug target. Now target validation, when we uh, talk about the uh, validation of the drug targets, we use a term which is known as the target validation. And this target validation is the process of demonstrating the functional role of the identifying target in the disease phenotype. 
while the validi validation of the drug efficacy and toxicity in uh, numerous disease relevant cell models and animal models is extremely valuable that means you can actually uh, validate your target in the cell models and you can also validate the uh, target in the animal models now the data that you get from the uh, diseased cell models or the disease animal models that is extremely valuable when you talk about the target validation the ultimate test is whether the drug works in the clinical setting because uh, when you talk about the drug that should work in clinical setting if that is working in uh, diseased cell models or if that is working in the diseased animal models but that is not working in the clinical setting that means that that particular drug that cannot be marketed and that cannot be utilized for the treatment of a particular disease now this target validation that can be broken down into two key steps how you are going to uh, validate your target now the first thing is that the uh, target should be reproducible the results should be reproducible what i mean by reproducibility is that once a target is identified whether it is via a specific technique a lot of techniques that are used for the uh, uh, identification of the drug target so uh, once a drug target is identified whether it is through a specific technique like the uh, diseased cell models or the diseased animal models or you have got target from a review of literature the first step is to repeat the experiment to confirm that it can be successfully reproduced so this reproduction will actually tell you that the target you have selected uh, uh, that that is responsible for the unknown human disease if that is reproducible that actually goes for the validation of that particular target uh, another key step is uh, if you are going to introduce variation uh, to your ligand uh, that it should be possible to modulate the drug's affinity to the target by modulating the activity of the drug molecules. So uh, if a drug is interacting with your target and if you are going to uh, change the affinity of the drug for the target or if you are uh, changing the uh, structure of the drug to increase its affinity with the target, you should be able to uh, process this particular data and you should be able to deduce uh, useful results from the uh, modulation of the drug's affinity for the target. Another important thing is uh, varying the cell or tissue type should or should not alter the drug effect. Uh, as you know that uh, when you talk about the human beings, a lot of tissues, they are there. So if you are going to, if you want that the uh, drug affinity uh, for that particular target should change when you change the cell or the tissue type, uh, that will be that will be going to uh, validate your drug. But in, in other case, uh, if you are interested that with the uh, tissue that with the uh, tissue or the cell type the uh, drug effect should not change so you have to validate both of the things depending on your uh, requirement now introducing mutations into the binding domain of the protein target that should result in either modulation or a loss of activity of the ligand because if you introduce a mutation into the binding domain of the target protein and if that is actually going uh, for the uh, less interaction of the drug uh, with the target protein that means that that particular drug that is very specific in interaction with that particular protein but the only real validation is uh, if a drug turns out to be safe and uh, efficacious in the patient. Major challenge is that uh, many targets fail late in the clinical several years after initiation of the project. Thus, we have to improve uh, on our ability to identify promising targets early on and open science and sharing of data may help in this particular regard. Because uh, when you start uh, the, uh, when you talk about the different steps of the uh, drug designing that we will discuss in the next video, you usually start from the lab, then you go towards the uh, animal models or the disease cell models, then you go uh, towards the human human trials or which is known as the uh, clinical trials. So the uh, targets that you have identified, the drugs you have selected, that works very well in the lab, that also work very well in the diseased cell or the animal model. But when you come to the clinical trials, usually uh, most of the drugs, they fail because of the uh, severe side effects or non-working in uh, a full living organism. So the only real validation that actually is that if a drug is 
is uh, working or if a target is uh, uh, if a target can be targeted for the treatment of a, for a particular disease by a drug in the uh, clinical trial so in the next video i'll tell you how to find uh, a good drug in this video we talked about how to find a particular good target in the next video we talk how to find a good drug so if you like the video please uh, subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it uh, with your friends we will uh, continue discussion in the next video